We've had lots of requests at Lynn Electrics for a video on what we are actually testing with radial circuits, be they radial socket circuits, lighting circuits, cookers or showers. In this video, we will look at what each of the dead tests is achieving for us and why we do the tests a certain way and the results that we are expecting to see. Let's begin by looking at a radial circuit. What is it? We have shown here a water heater circuit, but it could just as easily be a cooker or a shower, etc. The cable that supplies the power to it is, in this case, 2.5mm twin and earth. The cable leaves the consumer unit, and when it gets to the water heater, it stops. That is the end of its journey. And that is a radial circuit, out to the points of use, and then stop. We will look at the three main dead tests that we should apply to this cable. If you can understand and master these tests, you will be able to test any radial circuit confidently. Continuity tests must be carried out first, always first. We want to know if each of the copper conductors is continuous from one end to the other. Until we have established this fact, all the other tests are meaningless. This is a low ohms test. In other words, we are expecting test results of just fractions of an ohm. One or two ohms for longer cables and for domestic work, never more than five ohms. If you do a continuity test in a house and it is more than five ohms, then something is wrong. And the voltage applied to the test is typically somewhere between four and nine volts. Next, we carry out an insulation resistance test. Are each of the wires electrically separated from each other? No cuts or nails in the plastic insulation around the copper that will allow electric current to leak from one conductor to another. This is a high voltage and a high ohms test. We will be testing at 500 volts and expecting our test meter to display results in the order of mega ohms. In other words, millions of ohms. High resistance test results like this will show that the PVC insulation is doing its job. It is insulating the copper conductors from one another. And then there is the polarity test. Is the phase wire being switched by the circuit breaker? Are any other switches, light switches, control switches, etc. that are in the circuit operating on the phase wire? For the safety of the occupants, we need to know that the phase is being switched. These basic tests will confirm that if we send a voltage or current along the phase wire, it will come back along the neutral wire and that the earth or CPC is there to carry any fault currents and cause the fuse or breaker to disconnect the supply. When carrying out these dead tests, the circuit must be de-energized. Please ensure that you carry out the proper safe isolation procedure before beginning work. We always start with continuity. Looking at our standard twin earth cable, we're going to disconnect this at the consumer unit end and we need to expose the conductors at the water heater end too. If the conductors are left in the switch, make sure that the switch is turned off, otherwise you may get odd results. We want to do a test for continuity, low ohms, between points 1 and 2 on this drawing. We always test the earth first, since without an earth we cannot pass the circuit. No earth no pass. But the consumer unit and the water heater might be 20 metres apart and the test leads only stretch to 2 metres. What do we do? We can use a small connector block or Wagos to connect the phase and the earth together at the consumer unit and use the phase wire as a wander lead. Down the phase and back along the earth. We need to test this configuration at some point anyway. We can now use our meter at the water heater end and test between 1 and 2 the phase and earth as shown. We should get a low ohms reading. If our 2.5mm twin and earth was in fact 20 metres long, the reading will be about 0 0.39 ohms. We need to record this number. It is the R1 plus R2 reading that we need for the test certificate. It is the resistance reading along the phase wire or R1 and back along the earth, the R2. How do we know that we have a good reading? This table has been made up using data from table B1 in guidance note 3. 
We have shown different sized twin and earth cables and their corresponding resistances for different lengths. As the cable length increases, the resistance increases. As the cable size increases, the resistance decreases. This is an important rule to remember. The twin and earth cable for our example has 2.5mm phase and neutral conductors with the 1.5mm earth and it is written as 2.5 slash 1.5. Find this in the orange section and follow that column down to match up with 20 meters length. The table tells us that we should expect a reading of 0 0.39 ohms. Our test reading for this cable should be 0 0.39 ohms, give or take a small amount. Now move the connector block so that it connects the neutral and earth together. Carry out the low ohms test again between the points marked 1 and 3 on the drawing. As the neutral is the same size as the phase and is the same length, we should get the same reading for this test, about 0 0.39 ohms. This result is not recorded on the test certificate, but we do need to know that it is a good test. We will perform a polarity test next. According to the regulations and to guidance note 3, this test should be carried out later, but it is the same setup as the continuity test and is often done at the same time. What do we want to achieve with a polarity test? We need to confirm that any switches in the circuit are actually switching the phase wire. As you can see, it is performed between the phase and CPC using exactly the same setup as before. We cannot test polarity between phase and neutral since we would not know which one was being switched. With the switch in the closed or on position, current can flow from one terminal of our test meter along the earth conductor, through the terminal block and back along the phase, through the closed switch and back into the test meter. We should see a reading of about 0 0.39 ohms if we use our water heater example. Now open the switch, put it into the off position. Now. No current will flow as the circuit is no longer complete. We will see the meter maximum ohms displayed. This will be 2000 ohms, 3000 ohms or whatever your test meter displays for an open circuit. Whatever it is, it will be a very high resistance. And this will prove that it is the phase wire that is being switched. Next, insulation resistance. We are checking as best we can that the PVC insulation around the copper conductors is intact, that it is not damaged or split and that there are no nails or cuts penetrating the cable. We test the plastic insulation by putting a test voltage down the copper conductors to see if the voltage can jump from one conductor to another. We test at a much higher voltage than normal. If the voltage cannot jump across at this higher voltage then it won't jump across at the normal voltages. The meter will produce 500 volts of test voltage. And a word of warning, if you are touching any parts that are under test or touch the meter probes during the test, then you will be tested at 500 volts as well. For this test, all conductors must be separated from each other. Remove any links that you have used in the previous tests, unplug any kettles or other equipment, neon indicators in switches will affect results so remove the switch or isolate the neon indicator. 500 volts can damage vulnerable equipment. Remove dimmer switches or smart switches and replace them with standard switches for the test. If sockets have integral USB chargers, then replace the socket with a standard one for the test. Fluorescent lighting will have a transformer inside the unit and you may need to isolate the light fitting before the test. We will now put a 500 volt test voltage between pairs of copper conductors to prove the PVC insulation. Begin with testing phase to earth. Because we have already proved continuity, we can test at whichever end we wish. We can test at the consumer unit or at the water heater. It makes no difference. When you press the test button, 500 volt is maintained across the cables for a few seconds. If the test fails because the insulation is not intact, a result of 0, 0.00 
is usually shown. A good result, good insulation, will show a very high resistance, several million ohms or megohms. The regulations tell us that anything above one million ohms is a good reading. But expect, especially with new installations, readings of 199 megohms, 299 megohms, or whatever your meter maximum is. These high numbers are all good readings, a pass. Now test between phase and neutral. Again, we want high readings for a pass. And lastly, test between neutral and earth and expect the same high readings. That is the basics of insulation resistance testing. Make sure phase, neutral and earth are all separated. Carry out a 500 volt test between pairs of conductors, phase to earth, phase to neutral and neutral to earth and expect readings of above 1 million ohms for a pass. There can be problem areas with pre-existing circuits when carrying out insulation resistance tests. Some examples might include the burglar alarm or a fire panel that cannot be isolated, perhaps because of where it's positioned. There may be 12 fluorescent lights on the circuit, and most of them are mounted high up in a factory unit, making access to them impossible without a scaffold tower. Or maybe every socket in the house has a USB charger integrated into it. Are you really expected to replace 10 or 12 sockets just to test that one new socket and then refit them all afterwards? To get around this, regulation 643.3.3 permits the phase and neutral of existing circuits to be connected together, effectively bonded them together for the test. Now, we only do one insulation resistance test between the joint cables and the earth and when 500 volts appears on the phase 500 volts also appears on the neutral the net difference between them is zero volts and so the attached equipment the burglar alarm cannot be damaged by the test voltage at zero volts potential difference there will be zero current in the circuit Regulation 643.3.2 recognises that SPDs, surge protective devices, cannot be tested at 500 volts. They will always try to reduce the voltage to 250 volts. It is, after all, what they are designed to do. Therefore, we test any circuit with SPDs installed at 250 volts but still expect the same 1 megohm, 1 million ohms test result. Looking at lighting circuits in particular, we must ensure that we test these properly, one-way, two-way or intermediate lighting. If we look at this basic two-way lighting circuit shown here, one of the switch wires carries voltage into the switches. With the switches in the position shown, the voltage cannot leave the circuit along the second of the switch wires and so the lamp is off, it is unlit. We must therefore put one of the switches into the opposite position. Just one switch, not both, and now the circuit is completed. And then we repeat all three insulation resistance tests, phase to earth, phase to neutral, and neutral to earth. With a dead circuit, we can never be sure in which position the lights actually are, and so we must always flick a switch and repeat the tests. This drawing shows the switch in the off position. We can see that some of the conductors, shown in red here, will have 500 volts test voltage on them. The conductors shown in green will not be tested. Now, operate a switch and all the switch conductors are connected together. They are all part of the 500 volt test. Hopefully, this short video has helped your understanding of the dead tests for radial circuits. This little table shows each of the three tests that we just looked at and what we want to achieve with each. Learn about testing, become the best you can at testing. If you can test properly, you will soon get a reputation for being a knowledgeable and safe electrician. Well, that's it. We hope that you've enjoyed this video and that you have learnt a little more. Please click on subscribe below to have access to all of our videos and to be sure of not missing our next Tech Tips video. Subscribing also helps us too, and we do appreciate this. Typing in Learn Electrics, or one word, into the YouTube search bar will also give you access to all of our videos at any time. Thank you for watching, 
and we hope to see you again very soon.